Welcome to House Call. I'm Dr. Gerald Lala. And I'm Dr. Richard Jensen. It's great to have you with us again today as uh, we're going to discuss amino acids. And the reason that we are is because we receive a significant number of requests from our viewers to discuss amino acids. And of course, amino acids are proteins, therefore we need them. And you might question uh, why are two doctors of chiropractic talking about amino acids? Well, Amino acids are vital to health, and even though we practice a traditional chiropractic, uh, we also have a significant emphasis towards uh, nutritional health, health and well-being that's based on scientific evidence, not on guesswork or voodoo nutrition. And there are a lot of people out there today um, advocating the use of amino acids, and uh, that's fine, but a person can take uh, the wrong amino acids or they can take them in the wrong chemical ratios. So for example, when a person buys a bottle of amino acid, acids, they'll list on the label uh, what the, the different types of amino acids are. And they, for the body to properly utilize them, they have to be in proper chemical ratio. Well, the federal government um, is so busy uh, trying to regulate the drug companies and the medical device manufacturers that they spend little time, effort, and have little money to go out and investigate the, um, the uh, amino acids in the food supplement industry. So Dr. Jensen now is going to begin our discussion of amino acids. What are they? Okay, well, thank you, Dr. Lala. Uh, what are amino acids? Uh, you've heard of the word protein. Uh, it's one of those macronutrients that we eat. It's usually, if you have a piece of meat, it's, uh, it's primarily protein. Eggs, uh, the whites, are primarily protein. Um, but the, uh, it's a long string, a protein is a long string of amino acids. So amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. And when we digest food, uh, we have these enzymes that cut this up into small pieces. And what we try to do is our intestinal tract is designed to um, absorb amino acids and in, in, single amino, in single amino acids, not as long chains, but in the very, very short chains and even in their individual amino acids. And so, so, so in that, amino acids are proteins. I mean, they're the building blocks of proteins, and those building blocks of proteins come from either animal or vegetable sources. So those of you who are uh, vegetarian, you're getting your amino acids from plant forms. And in some of those plant forms, they don't contain all of the amino acids. So that's why they tell you that you should mix some of these vegetables so that you can get, you know, like in, in this particular thing, you get all your amino acids except for your uh, methionine. And so they want you to put another uh, vegetable that carries methionine but may be missing its cysteine. And so you're getting both of those things together, such as like in corn and beans. So. Um, uh, where when you're eating a piece of meat protein, that's usually uh, the full package. It usually has a full blend of amino acids in it. Uh, they are genetic. Uh, they are the genetic basis or building blocks of all living matter and affect all the internal biochemical activities or health uh, that, that dictate health or disease within the body. And that being the case, if we go right on down to, to the very basis of it, um, it's uh, RNA and DNA are, uh, are contained or are, are consist of these amino acids. When you look at uh, ribose nucleic acid, um, deoxyribose nucleic acid as which in, it, it, when you're looking at DNA, um, that contains 
particular amino acids. So in addition to consisting of proteins, amino acids containing oxygen, hydrogen, and phosphorus, and, and nitrogen, which are elements that make up the DNA and the RNA. So let's look at DNA. The outside of DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, molecule contains a genetic codes and information which enzymes play important roles. Because what happens is this DNA is the template for which we create all those different things in our body, including uh, enzymes, including the template for creating the proteins which will eventually become muscle or any other kinds of tissue that's within our body. That code is within there and it's encoded uh, using primarily these uh, amino acids. And then it's placed together in certain formats that what you have is uh, in a protein, you'll have a string of these amino acids put together. Well, those amino acids have different uh, affinities to each other electrically. And so if you put together a string of these things, what will happen is sometimes as you put them together, they'll have a little bit of a rotation, a curve like a helix. Okay, as you hear, DNA is a double helix structure. It's 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 like a ladder that's that's twisted. Okay, but sometimes you have that, and some of these will have an affinity, have a negative charge with a positive charge back here, so they'll double over back on each other, which will give it another structure, and then they'll have another that will create another thing, which will give it another structure, such as like it's the cysteine in your hair. This is you know when you burn your hair, you have that sulfur smell. That comes from the amino acid cysteine that's in your hair. But cysteine has an electrical component in it that creates an electrical bond with the hair around it or within it. And what happens is there's a difference between the cysteine content in your hair, whether you have straight hair or curly hair. It all depends on how much of these different types of, of, um, of amino acids are contained within the hair. So um, as we're looking at DNA containing that, that genetic code or information, uh, we're looking at the coding of each of these proteins within the body. Now, enzymes. Enzymes are amino acids or proteins that stimulate or increase or catalyze the force or velocity of chemical activities in hydrolyzing or breaking down of foods without destroying themselves. So let's put it this way. Chemical reactions need to have, usually need to have a certain amount of energy to take place. Such as the reason why our foods stay fresher longer in the refrigerator is that the temperature is decreased to the point that these chemical reactions don't take place as fast. Many of these chemical reactions that take place in our body need a higher temperature than a 98.6 to work. And so what happens is God in all, of his, uh, in, in all of his wisdom created these enzymes to make it so that this chemical reaction would take place at a lower temperature, such as at the 98.6. This is one of the reasons why when we have to have an increase in our immune function when we're fighting off a disease, the body decides to raise our temperature so that we can react faster to the increasing disease as well as and sometimes inhibit the life of these smaller organisms. They're much more susceptible to the heat. So that's another part of the wisdom taking place in our body that, uh, that allows us to deal with foreign invaders also is by that. So enzymes do a number of things. Uh, like, we, like, uh, like we said earlier, hydrolyzing or breaking down of foods. So enzymes are used to break down those proteins in the shorter chains to make it into amino acids, which are the building blocks that we can then rebuild in our own body. It's a very important thing to do that because if these proteins come in as a total chain, that total chain, uh, the configuration of those amino acids is what our body then recognizes as, hey, was this made as part of me? Did I put it together or did something else put it together? And if something else put it together, it's probably a foreign invader and therefore my immune system should attack it. And that's what happens is it recognizes as part of you, part of self or not 
and will, will attack it. So therefore, we want these enzymes to break it down just into its amino acids, which is too small for the body to recognize as something else. Okay, does that make sense? So it's, it's the way that we want our food to be absorbed in its building blocks rather than, having it, uh, rather than not having it broken apart and therefore uh, creates a food sensitivities and things like that that are deleterious to our health. So enzymes and genetic codes. Healthy enzymes have the innate ability to detect the basic chemical structures inside of what is referred to as the twin spines of the double helix, which are linked to one another by pairs of four chemical bases. And this is where we have adenine, cysteine, uh, cytosine, guanine, and thymine. And we usually look at those as an A, C, G, or T as uh, when we're looking at genetic code. If you ever see a printout of genetic code, it's usually they use A, C, G, or Ts on there. Uh, so upon, upon these four letters, basically, these four configurations, is what our genetic code uh, is written with, uh, kind of a uh, almost a, uh, not a binary uh, computer language, but uh, uh, quaternary uh, computer language, if you, want, if you want to look at it in those regards. So within that, with looking at our genetic code and how it's put together like that, we want to look at uh, the actual, the, this, this grandiose experiment that we had going here some years ago. It's called the Human Genome Project. So Dr. Lal, do you have something to share about the Human Genome Project? Yes, and um, there are over 30,000 or so genes in the human genome which can be programmed in microarrays and used to profile the characteristic nature and pattern of a genetic activity. When healthy, the enzymes travel along the helix, as Dr. Jensen was discussing, for damaged cells and play a role in recovery. So our body has an innate ability. God has given us our bodies the innate ability to heal itself. Plus, healing is not supposed to be just from a natural perspective, but it's supposed to be also from a supernatural perspective in that when a person becomes born again in Christ Jesus, their spirit becomes, the Holy Spirit enters their spirit, that's called imputed righteousness, and as we cooperate and realize that our real person is a spirit person, and as we cooperate with the Holy Spirit, it begins to affect our body and our mind. So this transformation begins to occur. Well, when we first go healing from above down inside out, see above down inside out, that through the word of God by grace, because we live in this age of grace, then it greatly influences this natural healing process of, as we said here, when healthy the enzymes travel along the helix looking for damaged cells. So in other words, the blood of the lamb, the stripes that Christ bore for us, affect those damaged cells and influence, they supernaturalize the natural aspects of our potential healing. Now we know about the term mutation. Let's discuss that a tiny bit of time on that now. When that fails, when that natural healing process fails, and or when a person does not avail themselves of the supernatural healing process, then mutations occur. So when that occurs, mutations occur predisposing the cells to abnormal changes at conception and or become evident at various stages of life in the disease process. So when a person is born again, they're, when, uh, spirit, when, they're, when they're born as a man or a little boy or a little girl, they are starting to die already. And the reason that they are, God does not, did not create man or woman to die. But because of disobeying one command of God, man began to die, and that continual death process is ongoing. But that death process is turned around when a person becomes born again in Christ Jesus. Not only does their spirit become born again in Christ Jesus, but they have the influence of the Holy Spirit on their spirit, which in turn affects their body and mind. So 
That's why God created us to have long life and good health, not short life and bad health. God did not design us to die early or to suffer with diseases while we're here on earth. And if we understand and incorporate the natural laws, but have them superimposed by the supernatural laws of health and healing by grace, not by the law, because Jesus satisfied all of the laws, all of the laws of Moses. He satisfied all of them as a means of achieving righteousness with God. And it's only by one thing that occurs, and that's faith in Christ Jesus and nothing else. doesn't matter how many rules and regulations you try to add to this, they're not going to work. As a matter of fact, when you try to live a holy life by the law, by the law, you curse yourself. The scriptures are quite clear about that. Now, what are some of the common symptoms re of related amino acid deficiency? Remember now, amino acids are proteins. When we eat a protein, vegetable, animal source, the body, if it's working correctly, breaks it down in the stomach and they are absorbed in the small intestine. So some of the common symptoms of related amino acid deficiency are Addiction issues, so addiction to tobacco products, to alcohol, to drugs. People are trying, because of amino acid deficiencies, they are predisposed to misuse of alcohol, tobacco, or drugs. Addison's disease, which is principally an adrenal gland issue, where the adrenal glands do not produce the corticosteroids that the person needs to stay healthy. Allergies, almost all forms of allergies, be they animal allergies or food allergies, and, we, and there are also acquired allergies, meaning that if I overeat a certain food, it can be a healthy superfood, but if I overeat that food and I have an imbalance in my diet, I am going to weaken my immune system and therefore develop an, an acquired allergy. Anxiety issues are also often related to amino acid deficiencies. And again, an anxiety is a mental issue that is having physiological and psychological issues on my body or on my earth person, as I would call it, as opposed to my spiritual or heavenly person. And so I am going to be more predisposed that my mind is not going to have the immune strength that it should have to ward off things that would typically cause or predispose me to anxiety. Another a condition that is often related to amino acid deficiency is cancer. Almost all forms of cancer have some related amino acid deficiency where in fact that DNA and RNA that Dr. Jensen was talking about is interrupted and mutations occur rather than the healing process. So it's interesting, a lot of people will go out and try and deal with a health problem, including cancer, by changing their diet. Well, it's not too late. It's never too late as long as the body's still warm. But if they don't superimpose their natural approach with the supernatural word of God through continued belief in the ongoing atoning works of Christ Jesus, it's not really going to work that it, as effectively as it could or as God designed it to. Candidiasis or yeast fungus infections, often related to digestive issues, often related to amino acid deficiencies. Almost always in the con patients that we see and that we do blood studies on to determine if it really in fact is a yeast or fungal infection, we find amino acid deficiencies within their body. Circulatory issues is another related amino acid deficiency. Uh, my arteries are made up of amino acids, of protein. If I am not getting adequate amounts of amino acids into my system, my arteries are going to change their chemical structure and nature, and it is going to allow them to be more sensitive to plaque occurring within inside of them. And then another uh, related amino acid deficiency is called Cushing's disease. Not real common, but many people uh, have that. Now some other common symptoms related to amino acid deficiency are depression. And of course, that's related to neurotransmitters. And Dr. Jensen, do you want to spend a few moments advising our folks about what neurotransmitters are? Sure. Uh, neurotransmitters are uh, actually signaling chemicals that, that, uh, that jump the barrier between uh, a nerve cell and another nerve cell or a nerve cell that um, 
uh, has a connection with a muscle, those kinds of things. It, it, it's, it's basically the um, expression of that nerve going forth as a chemical messenger between the two. It usually has a synapse, which has a structure about like this, where you have uh, where the one nerve cell that's communicating, it, it surrounds uh, the, um, the sensor for another nerve cell. And these chemicals jump that little synaptic uh, area between that, that synapse, and can lock onto this and, and create that communication. And Therefore, so, predisposing a person to psychological problems such as depression. Some other common symptoms related to amino acid deficiency are digestive issues, eating disorders, anorexia or bulimia, epileptic seizures. I mean, if they're if my brain is not receiving the brain food that it needs, including amino acids, then the electrical charges in my brain are going to be altered and, and the person's going to have an epileptic seizure. Another common related um, symptom of amino acid deficiency is fatigue. Another is fibromyalgia. Isn't that interesting? And there are a few others also. Gout, um, painful joints, headaches, Immune disorders, immune disorders where people are having immune disorders like say muscular sclerosis or muscular dystrophy. Kidney problems, malfunction of the kidneys. Learning disorders, there we are with attention deficit syndrome for example. Very often those children and when they grow into adulthood those issues could be more, could be more minimized if somebody did an amino acid analysis on them and re-regulated their amino acids if it shows that's needed. Then another common symptom of amino acid deficiency is menstrual problems. Some others, interesting now, are osteopenia, the early stage of osteoporosis. If that's not corrected through amino acids and calcium, for example, and vitamin D, then it's going to lead to osteoporosis. Some other conditions are Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, and phobias. Now, let's talk about the different classifications of amino acids, and I think Dr. Jensen is prepared to address that subject. Thank you, Dr. Lala. Uh, classifications of amino acids would fall into two categories. There are essential and non-essential amino acids. Basically, what we're finding is that these amino acids can be manufactured in the body. However, there are some of those amino acids that are manufactured at much too slow of a pace for the body to create sufficient amounts for its use. And therefore, we must take them in, supplement them, as you will, uh, from our diet. And so there are the essential amino acids, which are the ones that we, that we must consume just because we will, will, we will deplete our sources in our, in our body. And then there's the non-essential amino acids. These can be synthesized within the body uh, from other proteins that we ingest. And so there's a little bit of a switching going on uh, that takes place between uh, what's needed. And so if the body needs a certain component, it uh, holds off on that reaction until sufficient amounts can be there. And therefore, that's why we need to ingest some uh, proteins also. Now, the, the essential amino acids, uh, there's the, listed as isoleucine, leucine, valine, methionine, threonine, phenylalanine, and L-tryptophan. And uh, those, uh, we actually find like uh, phenylalanine and L-tryptophan, and then there's another one called tyrosine, which is a non-essential amino acid. Those we, we see create uh, certain uh, uh, neurotransmitters like tryptophan becomes serotonin, which helps us feel all as well of the world, uh, which then can also uh, from uh, serotonin becomes melatonin, which allows us uh, in our sleep cycles as well as uh, helps free the brain from free radicals. Those kind of things. Phenylalanine and tyrosine um, help uh, create the adrenaline in the brain, keeps us awake and uh, 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 much more uh, acute and astute on, on what we're doing. So those are important uh, amino acids and can change our attitudes a great deal. Okay, well then, let's go on to digestion because it's very important in digestion in order to get these amino acids. When digested, amino acids give off chemical byproducts, which the body uses for cellular growth. 
and tissue repair, and other vital biochemical activities essential for health and well-being. In effect, when you look at, when you look at a person, uh, a great deal of their living tissue is made from amino acids. It's, uh, fats, uh, fats are more in the hormones. Uh, the uh, carbohydrates are more for energy, but you can create each of those from amino acids also. So amino acids, there, it, there, there are essential amino acids that need to take place. Now, one of the things that we want to look at is organic acid analysis because an organic acid analysis is the byproducts of some of these uh, proteins being, uh, being digested and cleaved, from, cleaved apart into its amino acid components. And if that cleaving is not taking place, then what we'll get is putrefaction of those proteins within our gut. And that means that we're not absorbing those amino acids Okay, and we're getting some byproducts that may not be healthy for us, and that comes from not having a healthy digestive system. And some of those chemicals are then they're found; those byproduct chemicals are then found within our urine, which is uh, uh, found as an organic acid analysis. The next thing is also a chem screen. A chem screen lets us see where we have uh, shortfalls within our within the essential nutrients in order to create some of the things that need to be created and therefore they become markers for nutritional deficiencies. Next, we'll look at some major organs that are affected by this, Dr. Vala. And some of the uh, major organs affected by amino acid deficiency are the gastrointestinal system, the liver, because it's uh, really the garbage can of the human body and detoxification, the kidneys, because they are involved in renal clearance of so getting toxins out of the body, brain cognition, the way we process our thoughts, certainly our nervous systems, certainly our cerebral spinal fluid, and body functions including sleep disorders. Many people with amino acid deficiencies have serious sleep disorders, fatigue, and what we want to encourage you to do, there are people out there, I even know a couple of medical doctors that own a company that sells amino acids, and they do amino acid analysis, but they, they forget, uh, they, they wait to do the amino acid analysis after the person has been on them. And I want to tell you that my experience is that the amino acid analysis should always be done, and that includes the neurotransmitters, those two tests, and then the third one, the organic acid analysis, should always be done before a person is put on neurotransmitters or other amino acids. That includes vitamins and minerals and homeopathic remedies. When you are messing around, you people think, well, they sell in the health food store, my chiropractor sells it, my nutritionist sells it, must be safe and everything. Look, your, this, your body is a serious, complex mechanism, and it needs to be looked at from a very serious perspective, not just aiming different vitamin and food supplement products at yourself to see if, in fact, you might get better, you might think better, or your cancer will go away or something like that. So please remember, this is the only body you're ever going to have. You're going to get a new one if you're born again in Christ Jesus. When he comes back, you're going to get a new body. But while you're here on earth, you're going to have to have health, and God wants you to have long life and good health. You can find the supernatural dimension of that in his son. You can find it in his son. And so we would invite you to invite Christ in your life. Accept him. Just say, Jesus, come into my life. Or secondly, if you know him, maybe it's time to make a, a recommitment to him. And it's all by faith. You don't have to have gigantic amounts of faith. It can be faith as the size of a mustard seed. And then make sure that you relate to him as he wants you to relate to him as a new person, a new spirit in Christ Jesus. And begin then to fellowship with some people who are grace-oriented, not law-oriented. So long life and good health to you. We've enjoyed having you with us today.